get halfway through or, or so, we'll have Jason Ingerman joining us as well. And uh, Joy Jason's doing some exciting stuff with us, um, contemplating how we could potentially incorporate badges to, um, to give the students some type of um, recognition for uh, the, the work they've done on the project and um, to kind of give a you know, pat on the virtual pat on the back for for the work that's been done. And so hopefully we'll get um, Jason at LinkedIn. Oh, there's Jason. I see him. There's Jason's here. Okay. Hi, Jason. So with that, I think I'll just jump right in. Um, first of all, I, I start everything, start and end every session with thank yous. Uh, I was talking to Gabrielle this week, and, and we, we really kind of can't believe this works because <laughs> we're, we're all here as volunteers. The client is pitching in on a Thursday evening and, and joining us. And, you know, it's just it's just amazing that we are all here on a Thursday night um, to talk about um, something that it's, it's just important to everybody. And we just really want to thank everybody for everything you've done so far and those final push as we the next six weeks as we go um, to finish things. Um, and so with that, I think I'm going to turn it right over over to, um, to Gabrielle to take us through a project management update. Um, just kind of talk about what the milestones are that we've hit already in the first six weeks. We're kind of at the midpoint. And what's up next on the agenda in terms of our next big uh, deliverables and milestones. Um, so with that, Gabrielle, you want to take over? I sure will. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm glad to see everyone out on a Thursday night. It was a little tough for me. I told Jennifer I went home from class today after teaching and fell asleep, so I'm glad I woke up in time uh, to be here. But it really has been an exciting project. I'm I'm like – Jennifer and I were talking about tearing up this week. Like, I could almost tear up at how fabulous the, the design coordinators and the teams have been. Um, we've hit so many milestones um, – just just even coming together, such a large group, and um, working together and getting to know each other, it's just, it's really been an amazing experience for me. I'm learning so much and having really a good time. So um, everybody got their design uh, plans in on time, which was great. Um, we are going to talk about, do we want to talk about the design document now? Jennifer, do you have that later? Um, do you want to wait until you go over the other? You, you know, you can talk about it now. The um, I don't think I really had. Uh, we can maybe move to this slide if you wanted to. <laughs> Should I do my um, okay. fall on the sword piece a little bit? That no, <laughs> take responsibility no, no, no. for Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer wants to wants to take responsibility for this, but it's really uh, of, of me. So I had emailed all of the design teams and asked them to use a template to. Um, give us more detail on the design plan. Some of the teams had very short design plans, and I think I probably confused everybody by using two different terms, design plan and design document. And I, in my mind, I had something different in mind for each, and I really did not explain it to you all uh, what the difference was. So I think some of the teams thought they already put their design plan up, that they were, you know, that they had put up what we needed. But um, we do need this design document um, completed and I sent out an email and gave you all till next Friday if it's not enough time let me know but we need something more detailed and I, I think Jennifer and I were talking about this because I started asking around to some other instructors here um, there seems to be a lot of terms circulating uh, to describe a design plan design document they're used interchangeably some people have different ideas of what both of them with the two are and I think there were some other terms that popped up um, but I was envisioning the design plan being just your initial kind of rough draft, what your idea was, but the design document built out quite a bit more with more detail. And um, you all are going to see this soon. Jennifer has developed a survey monkey that will give us really great feedback on your design document. And I think it's, it's so valuable for, for us as students to get really good feedback on the work we're doing. So, um, I did get a couple of the design documents back, but I do need you to finish that out. And I apologize because I feel like I'm making you go back and do work. Um, but I do need you to fill that out in order for our evaluators to evaluate your design plan or document. Um, we need that information. And uh, the, the, the feedback is just going to be instrumental. If you're having problems with that, let me know. Um, somebody's audio just went out there. I don't know. Oh, Jennifer, that, if you that, see could, that. that could. Um, could you hear? You can you hear me? I can hear you, but Sharon just oh, put okay. up the first. 
Yeah, if, if, if folks use the there. text chat, if for whatever reason you can't hear the audio, let us know. It looks like Sharon has trouble, but it might just be um, Sharon's connection. Um, and, and I do just want to mention um, to uh, to Gabrielle, it, it, like like she was saying, it, it's kind of a semantics issue. Is it a design plan, design document? But it, part of what um, my hope or my assumption was when we went into this is much like what happened when Elizabeth um, and Bonnie stepped up and did the personas. I personally had never used personas before. And so I, what I think is cool about what we're doing as a collaborative project that's hitting 15 different instructional design um, departments is we have this incredibly unique opportunity to borrow from each other on what people use within their own programs and what they advocate, what they teach in, for example, Instructional Design 101 class. And so, um, again, as part of kind of my whoops, I kind of um, assumed that we maybe would be able to take this part of the project um, a little further than when we were able. And, and that's something we'll look at down the road. But um, I think it would actually be really cool for us, maybe when we're at ACT, for those that are able to join, is to really talk about this. How do we document our design decisions, which, which really is the point of a design document, is to put on paper what your thoughts are before you get to the development stage. So if you're not at the position of being able to develop yourself, you need to get it to a point that you literally can hand it to another person who's going to be the developer and take it and run it to the next level. And, and that's really the whole purpose of this document we're talking about. And that's why I mentioned here on the bullet point, is it, is it more than just semantics? And I think it is. I think, I think it could be really interesting to have conversations about what content should be in it, um, what, to what level of detail, uh, those types of things. And so um, again, that was kind of my assumption we could take that a bit further than we did. So. So I'll just kind of leave, right. leave and, that and, part and part there. of it was my confusion, because when I met with all of you this past week, I didn't really explain, uh, clarify what what it was we were looking for. So if you all could do that, would be great. Can you go back? Oh, oh you did go back to the screen. So yes, the personas that was that came about so quickly, and I really appreciate. Um, Bonnie and Elizabeth working on those. They got those done so quickly, like over the weekend, dedicated their weekend to getting those done. And, and hopefully they have helped everybody with um, their design, uh, at least knowing what the learner is all about. So thank you so much for doing that. That was just done so quickly. Uh, I, I was very surprised at how quickly that got done. And then of course tonight, really our star tonight is Eric who is working on another project for grad school, and he has stepped up and offered to build this networking home base for the entire project. And we're so excited because it's giving us a complete vision of where this is going and what it's going to look like. So I'm really excited about it. Is he going to do his now, or do you have him later in the yeah, and, and you know what, um, and we can decide how much level of detail, um, if you, if we don't mind just tagging on with our comment, comments about the design document, as, as Gabrielle mentioned, sure. she shared a template um, with the coordinating designers, and as she said, she'll uh, address any questions they have, but um, I found this is really helpful when I'm working with my students. Um, I'm teaching uh, two different classes this semester at Old Dominion, and one happens to be an instructional strategies class, and another is cognition and instruction, and for whatever reason, and um, this is a, a conceptual framework that seems to work for the students. And so if you look on the left column, it's the instructional phases. And um, they cor correlate with um, this prior slide where no matter what type of instruction you develop, in, in some way, shape, or form, you have to get new information presented to the learner. And I have it in quotes because it could be something that's displayed, it could be discovered, it could be some, you know, something that comes up in, in discussion. Um, there's always some level of active learner practice where the learner is engaging with the content in one way, shape, or, or, or another. Um, and then there's the feedback and guidance element. And then I have it kind of grayed out here. Um, the, uh, the last area being um, there's usually some type of assessment of learning typically some type of uh, mastery assessment does, has the learner mastered the material to be able to move on, um, to, if, particularly in formal educational settings. And I have a grade out here because we're going to have different levels of mastery for, for what the, you guys are doing on the project. But um, just in general, these are the kind of the main phases. And then within the, um, the matrix here, the, the second, third, and fourth column from the left, um, 
it's where you start as a designer thinking how you're going to start filling in these boxes. So how do I want the uh, learner to interact with content? Um, to what extent will they be interacting with an instructor or a facilitator? Um, how, how will they be learn um, interacting with each other? And as we've talked about in this project, there probably won't be a tremendous amount of learner-to-learner -learner interaction, at least in the initial stuff that we're developing um, now, but that could change. We could have discussion boards or things that um, we may incorporate things with a learner. Um, but um, I just wanted to take a couple seconds just to help kind of frame this and again is this idea of a conceptual framework for the for the student designers to think about so think about way back when when you were in your undergrad classes I went to University of Wisconsin in Madison 40,000 students I sat in a big lecture hall with 500 students um, so for the most part there was no such thing as learner to learner interaction everything I had for the most part was came from came from a lecture from the instructor standing in front of the big lecture hall and then I read textbooks did papers graded paper or my, my papers were graded and then at the end of the semester I took a Scantron test of my recall of, of the material. So, um, you know, if, if you look at this, you see a lot of red, red boxes. Um, if you move through to what you're doing now, a college practicum or an internship, things kind of shift over to the right where you have a, a tremendous amount of learner-to-learner -learner interaction, usually within the group you're working with, a little bit less in terms of having formal uh, interactions with content. Um, and then think about some of the things that you've seen probably in your own workplace where you've worked e-learning compliance training sit you in front of a computer it's kind of shovelware a bunch of content dumped to you maybe you're a quiz maybe you're not maybe or not um, and then all the other boxes are pretty much uh, X'd out and so what you really need to do and think about um, when you're putting your design document together is to think about how are you going to get the learner to engage with the content. And as I said, it, it, this is a fairly decent conceptual framework. It's worked, again, for, like, as I said, for my students. And I, I use this literally every time I put a lecture together or a class together. I really think about how I'm going to have the learner interact with the content, the instructor, and other learners for each of these main phases of the instruction. So I think as you're putting your design document together and you're thinking about the instructional st strategies, um, it's just a recommendation I have that you think about this. And as I mentioned, Gabrielle will you, you can choose to use this as you want when you're working with the coordinating designers. Um, but I just wanted to, to take a moment tonight and, and talk about it a little bit. And so with that, I'll get off well, my, uh, my little soapbox. But yeah, go ahead. No, no, I think that's great. And Eric did ask that we get that posted up on Google Docs. Um, it'll be on the webinar, of course, for now. But if, if we can post that maybe. Sure. So they, Absolutely. they can access it. Absolutely. And it's just a suggestion. If you have, there's certainly there, you can have more uh, granularity to your instructional phases, but this, as I said, these are kind of the, the big four <laughs> that come out of um, most instruction. Um, so with that, let's turn it over to, to Eric. These were some of the uh, development things he's been working on for us tonight, keeping in, in mind the constraints that we've talked about before. So um, Eric, do you want to take us through? Um... Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my desktop here. Okay. All right. Can everyone see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, sort of. I know at the beginning of this uh, this project, I felt a, a little bit uh, in need of direction. So I sort of, I know we were thinking about okay, we need to design these instructional units or um, open educational resources or what what have you. And I thought. Uh, well, uh, we need to do this someplace. And Jennifer had said, well, I sort of like these, these are some good examples of things that I like. <clears throat> and so I said, you know what, I'll, I have a project for grad school that I'm working on that, that fits kind of nicely with this. And uh, I will, I will work. A couple of the big, uh, requirements for this are that it'd be something that is fairly um, requires a fairly low level of programming knowledge or understanding for future designers uh, also that it's uh, fairly accessible for people who maybe do not have a ton of uh, experience with uh, web 2 web 2.0 technologies or technology in general uh, and something that is sustainable for future use. So uh, those were sort of the three uh, things that I, I um, kept in mind. And then also uh, 
thinking about how we could incorporate um, our own units of instruction into the fabric of the site. So uh, here is the homepage. Um, this uh, site header here is, um, I was trying to pull something similar to what was up here on the uh, actual HOPE site. Uh, and uh, then I have the logo here for Grace Center Centers of Hope. I did a little editing in Photoshop with that. Uh, and then two main links here, you'll see here, left bar navigation. The two main portals for the, the site are for designers, which will be for not only us, but also future designers and for learners. Uh, <clears throat> and you'll notice here, I have a bunch of um, sort of icons. Those are all from Wiki Commons. So they're creative, Creatively Commons licensed. So no issues with trademark or or licensing. Uh, you'll see down here, uh, this is a free Weebly version. Um, so there's no cost to us to, uh, to, you know, to keep maintenance of the site. Uh, up here, I have just links to the Grace Center's Facebook page, Twitter feed, uh, the Google Plus community, and then also uh, an email to the um, just info email to Grace Centers of Hope. Um, here is the here is where most of the content is going to be. Uh, so this is the main page for the learners. Here is uh, going to be the content that. Uh, the Pilot C, I believe, is developing. Uh, here will be most of the content that Pilot A is developing. Uh, and then here is where Pilot B and then future, um, well, these all will be accessible to future designers, but um, primarily the instructional units will, will be. So uh, I've broken this up into four content areas. Uh, we can add additional content areas and additional sub content areas. Uh, those are just sort of the first ones that came to my mind uh, that might be topics that are handled on the GED. <clears throat> uh, so how this will work, uh, and you'll see underneath, I've written just click on the image act to access the tutorial library uh, for that topic. So what, how this will work is students, learners will come here, they'll see pre-algebra, they can click on pre-algebra and then that will open a separate uh, tab which will lead them to Google Drive uh, and then there they will have a folder with all of the tutorials um, pre-algebra tutorials <clears throat> uh, available in Google Drive uh, the thinking here is that something like Google Slides or PowerPoint uh, work very easily in this format because it's all web-based um, and particularly in the case of Google Slides, it doesn't require any proprietary software. It's fairly linear uh, and I would say fairly user-friendly. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the idea here is that future designers can create additional tutorials as needed uh, through Google Slides and then just drag and drop them to the respective folder based on the content area. Um, again, um, we can add additional columns here, uh, topics, so on and so forth. Um, so that's sort of the, the basis of the site. Here there's going to be information for future designers, including uh, links to the, um, to the Google group as well as um, I sort of am still conceptualizing what this might look like um, as, the, as well with community. The community is something I've added on a little bit for the process for the um, for a graduate project I'm working with. This can stay or go at the end. Um, that's really um, will be up to you all what you think if, if it's necessary or not. Uh, and then the about here, we'll just have some contact information, probably contact information for designers for learning, so on and so forth. Uh, and quickly here, uh, so this is th the face of the site. Uh, as far as creation goes, I don't know how who all is familiar with, uh, with Weebly, but it is a very um, sort of you don't have to have an, an uh, increased or an advanced knowledge of programming to be able to, to use it. Uh, I work with HTML, CSS, but I'm not a professional programmer. 
Um, I can go in and tweak the CSS or the HTML if needed, um, as future designers will be able to if they need to. Uh, but the the reason I chose this is A, because it's, it's a free platform, and B, because it's basically a drag and drop uh, interface. So uh, you have a template, um, and you can see here, I can change the number of columns, this image, I can drag an image over here, add a new image. Uh, it's the learning curve is very, very um, flat. So a uh, couple hours or so for future designers um, and they'll, they'll have the hang of things. Uh, you can also easily, uh, you can see here, if you if you want to edit the HTML CSS that you can do, I've made a few minor changes to, to color palette and a couple of layout uh, features, but nothing too large. I stayed mainly within the confines of the template. Uh, and then here is sort of page navigation, uh, layout, so on and so forth. Uh, again, I think it's fairly straightforward, um, but I'm certainly willing to walk any future designers through a, a brief tutorial of it if they need it. Um, so that's, uh, that's sort of what I've got so far. I've got some more work to do, um, but I'm certainly open to feedback or suggestions or uh, any any thoughts that you all might have? Yeah, I think it would be great. Uh, Courtney, I know you had your mic going. I'm not sure if Bonnie, you do as well. Um, Courtney, if you wouldn't uh, mind, I, I'd love to hear what your uh, initial thoughts are as far as, you know, what you think about. I know you've only had <laughs> five minutes to digest this, but is this generally <laughs> heading toward a direction that you were thinking uh, we may go? Yeah, it looks great. Um, I love... Um, I love the logo. I love how it's set up. And again, I know, I mean, nothing about instructional design, but I, I really like it. This looks great, Eric. Yeah, and I think, Eric, if you could also comment on this, I, I, I certainly think um, in terms of, as you said, development um, skills and abilities, it's really not much different than kind of editing a, a Word document at some point, right? As soon as you kind of figure out where things are to, to drag and drop or whatever it might be. Um, so it really could be to the point if we had folders for them to be able to upload content and things like that, that's probably something that, that Grace would be able to do as well, right? Yeah. I, to me, uh, can you hear me, uh, Jennifer? Yeah, and, sure can. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, f uh, I've seen uh, over the years uh, a lot of different interfaces and uh, uh, I, what I like about this one is that it's um, a visual, icon-based, uh, with the text to support it, without it being uh, cumbersome. Uh, I see it; it's very uh, uh, simple, yet uh, it covers all of the content areas. Uh, I, I I put in a text comment that it looks it looks great, but as far as working from a designer point of view, I could see it being very easy. I I, I started out uh, back in the 90s in author wear, which was extremely uh, difficult <laughs> as far as a learner <laughs> interface uh, uh, was. And uh, I never became a developer, but I learned a few different tools as I was taking my graduate courses. So this one just, it looks terrific. It, it reminds me a whole lot of, of the way PowerPoint uh, works with the drag and drop uh, of things. So uh, I, I think it's, uh, it has a familiarity to it. Uh, so I'm not having to learn new icons. They, they seem very intuitive um, and self-evident. So uh, yeah, really nice. I have a question, Eric, uh, when it comes uh, uh, to each of the sections, for instance, when it comes to uh, the content areas uh, uh, for the learners, uh, especially, will will and the designers, will they be able to, uh, let's say under um, algebra. I, am I then able to make uh, other sub content uh, under that? Is that the way it will end up? Oops, sorry. Like, I think we've got I top, think, topics. I think well, Eric, I think Eric's um, are you muted? Eric, go ahead. I, we, uh, yeah, there you go. We can hear you now. You, OK, um, can am I still sharing my screen? Um, yes. Okay. Yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. OK, yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, certainly that's something we can do, I think. The one thing is we want to make sure that this site remains fairly clean in its navigation exactly. and not mm -hmm. too cumbersome. So, right. you know, I could, you know, we can add um, 
additional icons. Uh, we could add another page, essentially. Uh, okay. That, or you could have a page that's all math. That's and a that's page that's all English. Uh, that's sort of what I was I I, I was alluding to is that you know, this 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 over. Uh, you don't want to. I agree. You don't want the students or the designers to have to go three, four, five levels to get to something. Right, right. Yeah, the, sort of the guideline is no more than two, and if you have to, three, but you know, two levels is really plenty to have to get to. But just based on my discussions with Kim and, and, uh, and Courtney before, is that sometimes, like with writing, uh, there are s topics that are specific such as uh, writing that is uh, that has to do with grammar uh, and then uh, other writing that may have to do with word usage so this is a very large subject area so I'm just asking if that capability do you see oh. that further down the line is that Abs we would be able yeah yes. absolutely okay. I mean they, yeah. okay. you can the, the one thing I as I said um, the content's not actually going to be housed here on the site, I see. right? It's okay. going to be it's going to be housed through the cloud. I um, see. So you know, if they go to pre-algebra, that could take them to a folder that says pre-algebra. They open that Google Drive folder, and then they might have, you know, six different subtopics yes. that they can select from. Yeah, I, I think get that, you. That's a it's a little bit. Um, for as far as the site is concerned, it's it's still, um, you know, storage capacities on the cloud are much greater than they're going to be here. And I okay. think that um, certainly going forward, we could have one page that is all math uh, and one that's all English. Uh, but you can do the same thing on the cloud, um, you know, with probably one less step. Yes. Okay. I you answered my question, and and again, I think. I just love the fact that it's a, it's a little bit colorful, but it's not overwhelmingly colorful. Uh, I, the the white background makes it uh, uh, easy on the eyes, and the colors are very uh, palatable. And uh, again, I don't get uh, um, assaulted by the uh, by the colors, and the icons are visual rather than just being text yeah. and so it's supported by nice clean text so just beautiful yeah and um you know I, what? I know when we talked earlier lab? um i know when we talked earlier we were saying um i don't think oops, so hang on a second i'm no. just gonna mute i think gabrielle you might be talking sorry there <laughs> um anyway the uh when we first had these discussions there was a kind of a push to have this housed in an LMS, which would allow us to do more robust assessments. And um, we, we were talking before we turned the recording on tonight when Eric was um, giving his demo, uh, kind of a pre-demo with uh, Courtney and, and Gabrielle and myself. Um, that, that What's great about this is if we do take this to a next level and would somehow get be able to get some funding, some seed funding to be able to take it to a new level, this is an awesome, uh, you know, impression of what we're what we're envisioning. And if we aren't able to do all, have all the capabilities within Weebly, um, that this isn't necessarily doesn't have to be our end game. But um, and I just wanted to acknowledge that because um, some folks were, were and rightly so were stating at the beginning that we need to have the ability to do some type of mastery assessment. Um, for le the learners as they're progressing to different levels to know what level they should be um, working on the materials. And, you know, it's not that we've ignored that entirely. It's just for the purposes of getting a prototype done within 11 weeks. Um, you know, this is what we think is, uh, you know, is a good way to approach it. So, Eric, I mean, just really thank you. This is great. And I think it's going to help the design teams as they now have something to look at to go, okay, this is what he's, this is what we're talking about. This is now what I can envision where we'll store our materials as we develop them. So thank you so much. Yeah, yeah Eric, it, it is. It, it looks beautiful. I agree with Bonnie. It looks just absolutely beautiful. But um, can you address how you're envisioning each of the design teams uh, adding their content for this, just so for those, Marie, and those who are present and those who listen to the webinar see their role in adding the content to this? Yeah, I mean, so what I'll do is, uh, I, you know, I'll create a shared Google Drive folder. Um, and then, you know, the individual pilot pro pilots right now can either share their content directly with me 
Um, so the I, I need to sort of think about this a little bit more clearly, but the goal is that um, you know all of the content is actually going to be housed on the cloud. So it will all be housed in Google Drive. But you know if a learner comes here and they click on pre-algebra, they're actually only going to open a folder that says pre-algebra. Uh, and then upon opening that folder, they're going to see a list of tutorials that are related to topics within pre-algebra. Uh, you know, there could be subtopics, sub sub themes related to that. Um, as far as the designers go, uh, you know, I think they, they should think about this as, okay, the learner opens up this, uh, and then they're going to go to a particular tutorial. Um, let's, let's talk maybe a more concrete example would help. Um, so we're doing, uh, American history, particularly, uh, a, uh, it's sort of a combination of reading, writing and American history. So students have to, uh, are presented with primary and secondary sources from three periods, uh, related to World War II, pre-war, during, uh, during the war, and post-war. And students need to, um, we have a couple of uh, integrated media items. Uh, so for example, we have Roosevelt's speech after the bombing of Pearl Harbor uh, in an audio format. Uh, and then quotes from people after the Marshall Plan was passed. Uh, so various documents, uh, and the students will have assessment and broad level questions uh, to sort of guide their understanding throughout the tutorial, as well as uh, some some questions that force them to develop some sort of cross cross textual understanding. So how that will work? We're creating that in Google Slides. The student will click on uh, American history. They will see uh, World War II textual analysis. I don't know what the title will be. Uh, as a Google, Google Slides presentation, they'll click on that, and then, boom, there's their tutorial. Uh, they might have another, you know, six tutorials related to World War II eventually. Uh, and so when they click on American history, they might have, a bunch of subfolders, American history, pre-18, uh, pre-restoration, American history in the 20th century, American history in the 21st century, and then each one of those might have additional subtopics. Um, so it's basically a very, it's a Windows-based organization system for okay, the so, learner. So they, the, the design teams don't need to learn anything new because we're already using Google Docs. Right. So it'll be the same process. So um, for those of you who are the designers who are attending, listening in, Eric and I will come up with uh, some, a timeline so we can kind of give them an idea when they can or should start uploading um, whatever they have completed or how we're going to, what the process is going to be for that, and maybe just some directions, just another overview um, to go over that again. Maybe we'll do that in one of our coordinator meetings yeah and if if i might just add quickly uh you know i know google slides isn't the most dynamic nor the most robust tool that we can use uh for creating assessment and and instruction but i think as jennifer uh pointed out earlier you know this is sort of the the purpose of this project is to develop something that is a prototype and also something that can be sustainable uh, and easily edited and built upon going forward. Uh, and I think Google Slides meets all of those criteria. Um, and so dis despite its drawbacks, I think it's actually, uh, you know, it works for what we're trying to do here. If I could be a defender of Google Slides for a second. <laughs> You can. You can. You can. <laughs> You're in the right crowd to do something like that. Um, all right. So it sounds like, um, you know, kind of going back to what we were um, what we were talking about before as far as um, going way back here, um, 
clearly the next milestones are, as, as Gabrielle said, getting that design document finalized so we can send it out for a review. But really also then this whole notion is we've, as Eric's done a great job getting our minds to shift from this idea of design to development. And so um, anything you can start getting on paper in terms of storyboards or prototypes or whatever it is that you choose to use, again, we'll, Gabrielle and I will I will probably have to talk about this because I tend to be a little squishy, loosey goosey on uh, on directives in in terms of deliverables on this stuff. But uh, the main point being, uh, we just need to then now really get it. We've got six weeks left, so we kind of got to start turning that corner, moving the ship, <laughs> as it were, from uh, from the idea of conceptual designs to actually getting things down on uh, on paper or virtual paper, as it were. Um, so anything else, uh, Gar uh, Eric or Gabrielle, before we hand things over to to Jason? to take us through um, some of the badging things? I, I think that's it. I think um, hopefully that has given everybody, you know, kind of seeing the end product somewhat, uh, you know, um, an idea where we're going and what it's going to look like. Uh, but I don't, I think we've touched on everything that we, um, we were going to touch on. Yeah. So thank you, Eric. Really. Thank you so much. Really, really exciting. And um, it looks like we, we do have a couple questions um, that are popping up in the um, in the text chat. So just to make sure before we switch things over to um, to Jason, if you can hang hang tight a little bit, Jason. Um, although he's probably used to waiting right now, I'll let him explain why uh, why that is. I won't uh, I won't steal his thunder. But um, so Preeti is asking. He's uh, working on the evaluation for the OERs, and I think uh, her question was related to um, would things mirror with what they're looking at in terms of common core and so that looks like something we'll need to um, um, to look into and so Preeti's on uh, project team A and so she's with the group that's working with the um, evaluating the existing open educational resources trying to figure out the ways that they could be adapted for use in with this audience with a GED prep audience and so her point is very well taken um, we should keep in mind how things are structured within uh, not only Common Core but the uh, CCR standards as well as the G the GED standards um, and I, th I think that's um, a really a good point and I think um, Sharon also had a question these are flying now everybody's talking I know <laughs> no, I can't keep up with it no I can't keep up for what they're like pro probing uh, and prompting people to, to talk. Um, so might the Sharon, so might designers use Google Forms to create quizzes? Good point. And Sharon, I think you brought that up in the um, discussion forums this week, which, by the way, always making a plug for my poor discussion forums that just sit there quietly and don't get a lot of ex excitement and attention. Um, Sharon's been great in posting some questions, but I, I believe this week Sharon asked the question that she said she would be willing to um, to help out. Uh, Sharon, again, is a subject matter expert um, who has uh, volunteered her time and is uh, sitting there in the wings waiting for the students to ask her for some help or assistance um, but she is very much interested in uh, figuring out a way to use Google Forms as a way to do assessments um, that was something that was inter of interest to her so if there's anything that this, the student teams may need in that area um, seek out Sharon um, any other thoughts on that Gabrielle okay I think I hit them all. I hope I got everybody's questions, uh, but keep them coming. I'll try to follow along. And with that, Jason, um, do you want to go ahead and take the uh, take the floor to to tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are on on badges? Sure. Can you can you hear me? Sure can. Yeah. Can can you hear me and can you see me? Um, I can see. You. <laughs> <laughs> so can you okay, tell good. us what can I my little thing? What what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my baby to come. Yay! I got a bun in the oven. Bun in, like yes. really waiting, like oh, eminently yeah, waiting, really, right? Yeah, we are patiently waiting. Um, he's due Monday. What? Mon yeah, this Monday the 31st. So. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. So exciting. 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 We are. We are very excited. So um, I'm, we're, we're a little on edge a little bit. <laughs> it's the first one, so we're kind of, you know, I, I, I commute back and forth to Penn State. So that's two and a half hours away. So it gets a little antsy, but I'm home now. I'll be home, you know, for a while now um, for, for some people that are worried about that. So if your wife comes like running this. by behind you with a, a small bag, we should, like, just know you might yeah. have to leave immediately. <laughs> okay, got it. Pretty, pretty much. I, I've had my phone on. I have to make sure it's charged, you know. Yeah, we got to get everything ready to go. But um, that's my exciting news for that. That's very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, so as far, as far as badges are concerned, I just want to talk to you about the badges for a minute. I'm glad that 
uh, Jen put this up for me here so I can just I can read it. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Penn, I'm out of Penn State University. Um, our Center for Online Innovation and Learning created this L3 program. Um, they just started up, I believe, last year. So it's about a full year probably through a process. And it is a work in progress. But it's a really cool, really easy way to generate badges, to make badges, and to earn badges. And initially, uh, Jen and I was talking about how you know the participants in this in this project should earn a badge and so uh, I just wanted to talk to you about my thoughts of how that badge should work or could work and a possibly a new use for this L3 platform all right so I'm gonna share I'll share the the website with you all right can I just yeah you should be able to share your screen right all right so let me pop that up here. All right. Can you see it? Uh, no. You know what? No. I wonder. I think we almost. No, I can't. Can anybody else? I think we're seeing for some no, reason Eric. it's not up. Oh, I think Eric has to stop sharing. There we go. I think we're good now. I think we still had Eric's uh, screen. There we go. You can Starting. You can see. There it is. Yep. It's, yep. There it is. All right. Wonderful. So, yeah, I'm going to share the website with everyone there uh, because I, as a you know, free software, it's a, it's a nice platform. It's easy to use. I log in. I'll show you what it has on there. Log on there. All right. So it's it's very simple. It, it has 84 available badges at the moment, and I'll just show you what one of them look like. All right. A very nice picture, um, and then it tells you how long it takes to complete the thing and it tells you the steps that it takes to earn the badge uh, for this particular badge um, you can read it on your own there but this is about an Excel basic workshop and it looks like it's just one step and what you can do is you can start it and once you add it to your queue <laughs> she does a dance and then I can if I'm logged in it's it is free you can create your own you know password and log in then you can start you can start that particular workshop and it's probably all embedded in here um, and it tells you it, it progresses you through through a particular amount of steps that you need to do so you know what um uh, right. Jason I um, just to yep. you and I have always talked about this uh -huh. in terms of creating badges as um, a kind of a capstone for the student designers, kind of a acknowledgement of their work. But uh -huh. Eric mentioned, uh, and it kind of right. we popped in our heads at the same time, did you ever have any intention of this uh -huh. being something that would be we we could ultimately incorporate for the learners? So as they pat, progress through various levels, which again we aren't doing those types of assessments, so it may be hard to do at this stage of the game. But did you ever yeah. think about that as for as some as something we might be able to add down the road? I had it definitely in the back of my head. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I, th I think that if it's something that you know uh, people that are in the project are are really excited about and may want to try. I don't see why why not. The the problem is that again this is a work in progress, so everything is housed on this site, um, so you can't really export them um, right now. Uh, right now the, ba the ba badges in general are, are very new, uh, and right now M Mozilla has this big initiative, and they have a backpack where you can export and import badges from all over the place. Um, I'm not sure that this allows you to do that just yet, but it is a work in progress. So it is, it does have some, some very nice features. You know what, um, Jason, maybe we should back up just a couple steps and just clarify for everybody okay. what we're talking about with badges, like what they are. Right. Like, let's, let's define, you want to go ahead and kind okay. of define okay. what they are? Sure. Yeah. So, so badges are essentially a digital portfolio. It's almost like a digital, uh, a resume and what it is is it houses uh, quite a bit of information unlike a resume where resume just has you know a blurb about what you did this can actually have the uh, products that you have uh, completed embedded in the badge itself so for example if I do this um, MOOC completion I'm not sure I'm not sure what these things do but let's just try this one Inside, inside this badge, it can actually have actual work that you've done, that you've completed. 
So it could have papers, it could have um, quizzes, it may have those things embedded in this badge to show the actual work that you've done as an example. Um, and so it's kind of for so, all of us educators yeah. are out there, it's just kind of the, 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 the behind the scenes part that ha also has to happen is coming up with the criteria w with, under which you're going to assess people, right? So what, 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 what mastery right. Right. You're, you're attempting to assess and then give the, the badge for. And I think that's behind the scenes what you've been sending me, right, Jason, the, um, for the design right. students is try to, trying to figure out what in particular we'd be we'd be assessing for the design students is it collaboration with the client is it um, preparing the deliverables or is eric's doing the development of a, a website or whatever it might be right right absolutely yeah so this is the back end of it i don't mind showing it because i think that anyone could just get on here and, and just use the thing anyway but on the back end of it um this is the back end here I have one set up right now. This is in a draft mode. Um, Designers for learning mapping and mining of education. This, so this is a pilot A. This is as a focus on pilot A. And this gives a, a detailed description of it. And what I'd probably do is I'd probably would delete those. And you know, it gives a, a, a general summary of what the badge has in it and what you did. And, um, and then the next one will say some more details about the badge. And I can also decide to turn it on or off again, how long it took to make it. Um, I have a closing date, who the evaluator is. So I'm, this is the issuer of the badge in this area here. Um, the step title. So right now I have three steps. And the first for, uh, for this project is project participation. And this basically says that you participated fully in the, um, in the uh, making of of your particular pilot um, and it talks about what the volunteers agreed to do so it tells exactly what you were able to do I got this right off of the site our home site that we have and the criteria what I can do here is I can decide whether I need text as evidence required whether I need an upload or another badge as well and that's on the back end of this and there's a second step OER deliverable. Did you create a sufficient enough deliverable? Here's the criteria for the deliverable. And on the back end, once you, once you kind of submit that you have um, completed uh, this task, the evaluator on the back end would look through the criteria and make sure that whatever you submitted or whatever you did, you know, met this criteria before they issue you this badge. There was a third step, which I put, which is client satisfaction as well. So those are the three steps that I had for completing this badge. That's perfect. And um, I'm not sure you probably, I, I can never follow the text chat <laughs> talk at the same time, but um, oh, we've got some good uh, good con conversation going on. Um, Courtney was just kind of asking what it was, and I, I tend to just equate it with it's kind of a very simple description. It's kind of like the gold stars of the digital age. Like when you were a kid, your teacher would stick right. a little gold star in your paper when you got, you know, your 10 spelling words right yeah. or whatever it was. Um, so that's kind of the one thing, the one way yeah. I look at it. Um, and so Preeti's asking, and this is a great question. Uh, so where will these uh -huh. badges be displayed? And I think that's what you were saying at this, at the current right. stage right now, it's kind of everything goes back to the, the COIL site, the L, L3 site, right? Right, right at the moment, right. But again, it is a work in progress. They are continually working on this day by day. They did get a grant for it. So they are continuing to work on it. Um, eventually it probably will have the capability to be exported wherever you need it to be exported. I'm just not sure it has that capability just yet, but I believe they're working on that. So right now everything is created and maintained here on this site. Yeah. Also, it's funny, Courtney's saying, interesting, our students literally get stars <laughs> and they get competitive. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a fun new way to, um, to display your talent and display and showcase um, your abilities. Yeah. Um, and then tied to this, um, I don't think Jill's on with us tonight, um, but she's been also thinking of ways in terms of more the now thinking about the design students who are working on this more t uh, like s true certificates of achievement that they, you know, it, it, a lot of the students are taking this class as part of a practicum or um, for example, Eric's taking um, 
uh, is going to use part of this for requirement in a course. And so we also have to think as an organization or whatever we're calling designers for learning is how we're going to give people formal recognition for what they're doing so right. it will give them uh, proper credit for the classes they're working in. And so right now that's all just been very informal where we're just saying to folks, like for example, Gabrielle um, had me complete a, um, I'm, I'm kind of like a, I'm putting in air quotes, a client for her, <laughs> for a, a project she's working on in, in school. And so I have certain responsibilities with her to, you know, fulfill a role as a client, get her pro proper credit for the experience she's doing here. And those are kind of bigger than badges issues, I think, where it's, um, we have to also think about how this would all tie together. But I think this is really cool. And I think it's neat that, as you're saying, it's, it's something that, it's kind of cutting edge for Penn State and that they've got this this grant they're working with and it seems like from some of the comments that are going through um, Jason <laughs> where the real big interest may be in, is with the learners. Right so how would the your learners uh, use this? Um, I think that you know MOOCs came along we're all familiar with what MOOCs are um, and where they're going and uh, what they are. Uh, badges are right there next to it. Badges are are, are coming up along with this gamification idea of education. Um, but not only that, I think that uh, companies are starting to look a little bit more seriously at this idea of a digital badge. And that's why COIL has put out the grant for it. And that's why you know the people that are working on this were all the, the big wigs at Penn State in the gamification air area, as well as the uh, e-learning area. So most of our big names at Penn State are in terms of e-learning, gaming, um, and, and certain technologies, they're they're into this because of the ramifications and the the possibilities for these to actually be used um, in a new age, in a new digital age, in a new information age. I think that Eric was was talking about a little bit. He says I think the anticipation is that in the future badges will function as a sort of virtual portfolio or resume. Yeah, I think that that is kind of the that's kind of what we're looking towards. And that's why, you know, this L3 initiative has kind of gotten kicked off. Um, but as far as learning is concerned, as far as our, our learners are concerned in this project, I think it would be a really cool, um, yes, I don't want to call it a, a, a treat. I don't want to call it that. <laughs> I, I think it just, it, we call it stickers, we call it gold stars, we, we can call it all these, these cool things, but what we're doing essentially right now is e-learning, you know? What we're doing right now is e-learning, and what we're doing right now is, is preparing, preparing these uh, students for the future, which is technology-based. So it is an incentive, right? It is an incentive, but it's also a nice uh, new incentive that's kind of on the cutting edge of what education is doing at the moment. And, and I think the the portfolio recognition piece is, it's going to be interesting to watch it play out because as you're saying, this is housed on this Penn State site, but as you're saying, Mozilla has a large program happening in the background to make this more of a, yeah. and for those that aren't familiar, Mozilla's the folks behind, for example, yeah. Firefox, Thunderbird, they're kind of the open source, <laughs> you know, share the love kind right. of people. And so they're trying to keep this as much as possible to be something that you could share across platforms. So I'm assuming then if you guys are dovetailing what you're doing at Penn State, that that's the ultimate idea is that um, this would be something that would be across platforms rather than just uh, within the one, right? Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and like I said, this is a, it's a work in progress. So it's going to be moved. Um, actually, they're, they're coming out with a new version of it right now so that we can, you can delete some of the, um, the badges that you've made. So you can kind of, it's more eat. They don't, they don't want to delete badges because people could be earning them. So they don't want right. to have anyone be able to delete them. But they're working on this kind of cloning process where um, you I, I'm really not in. I'm not on the badging side of things, but the people I work with are. They're probably better to better off telling you. Maybe I should um, I should send uh, a website or a webinar on badges to you guys so that you can get a little bit more familiar with it. Yeah. Well, I think this has um, has a lot yeah. of potential. I just wanted. To, I think maybe he's gone already. Or no, maybe he's not. I just want to say. It. Thanks to Eric. He's just heading out. Um, he's got to got to run. But thank you so much, Eric. Uh, before you go.
Um, but Jason, yeah, I think this is great. So once you get your baby home and you've taken your appropriate amount of <laughs> baby love <You're right>. time, <laughs> yeah. not thinking yeah, about badges, okay. <laughs> you bring the baby home. Um, I think this is yeah. awesome. And I, I really thank you for, for looping us in on this and what you guys are doing. I think it's, um, it's really cool. Um, so with that, Gabrielle, did you have anything before we wind down our hour here? Oh, the only thing I wanted to say, I love the the idea of the badges because it reminds me of the coins that um, uh, people used to get in AA. I think it's really a powerful thing, and I think it's a great idea. So thank you, Jason. And I was just thinking the same thing. If I was going to ask you if you could send us something, we could even if it's right. uh, you know written in article website, we can post in Google Docs so everyone can see it. But I just want to say just with Jason coming here and talking about this. I love the way this project is just growing and expanding. And for Courtney, who is online, I, I just want to convey to her and the other SMEs and faculty who are here, you know, working directly with the students, they have had so much passion about this project. I have had several students tell me that whatever comes after this, that they are on board, that they are willing to continue this project after it's done and contribute however they can and help with the development, with um, more prototypes, with actually building content. And I think that's really wonderful because I think beyond just getting credit in class and maybe earning a badge, uh, they really, their heart is in the project. And I think that's really important. Yeah, it's just amazing. Like, I'm not kidding. What, what was that, Monday or Tuesday? We were like, how is this working? <laughs> It's just awesome. It's just no, it it's has just, just all come together beautifully, it's just, and, it's great. and it's, I'm just really proud of the the designers. And and really, thank you so much to Courtney and and to uh, to Bonnie for playing along with us. You know, you guys probably could have pounded this out quickly yourself, but Bonnie could have probably had <laughs> six, seven modules developed by now with her expertise. But um, thank you for your patience and in, in letting us uh, learn learn what you do and, and, and learn in the in the process of, of working with you. So thank you again for your patience and, and showing up on a Thursday night. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording and um, I'll stick around if anybody has any additional questions, but I just wanted to uh, kind of have an out point for the, for the recording. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, yes. Um, I just, I recording just Recording of dropped. the conference has stopped. Sorry. Well, the recording uh, stopped, but no, you keep fine. going. You keep the going. You can, no, keep talking. We're, we're still, we're still live. Go ahead. Well, um, I just got um off of the the Coil website. I just grabbed Kyle Peck's College of Education presentation on L three and digital badges across Penn State. So I just dropped that into the um chat box there. So there's the link, and you guys can get. Okay. Call I'll, I'll go ahead and post up. it in Google Docs. Oh, then. that's perfect. Great. Jennifer, yeah. Thank you so much. He's got an hour and a half long video about. <laughs> the, <There> you <laughs> so go. you're going to get really caught up <laughs> on what go. L3 is about. And if you need any more information on on it, you know, I, I'll be more than happy to, to find it. Excellent. So. Well, as long as we've got, um, you know, I, I don't want to take anybody's uh, more time than, than but, but did uh, I'm going to unmute, make sure Bonnie and Courtney are unmuted in case they had any questions. But did Bonnie or Courtney, as long as we have your phone on the phone, is there anything you need of us or anything that you want us to think about or do that you haven't heard tonight, you know, Please, all, either now or send an email to Gabrielle or whatever. Um, but is there anything that you'd like I, to say? I have nothing. I just, I did write my comment that uh, you guys are terrific uh, and you've, you're leading a charge and bringing so much innovation and uh, ideas to the table. Uh, so just thank you. Oh, no. But you, you're the one that brought us here, Bonnie. You're the top of the little pyramid. Yep. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, and then, like I said, Courtney, just anytime you have a question or if you think we're going in a goofy direction or when you talk this over with Kim and you show her the video or whatever, please let us know if there's something that's going off the rails a little bit or you'd like us to consider a different option. We're very open to any ideas you have. And Courtney in particular, I don't think we thanked you enough for filling out the questionnaire. We hit you with a pretty big document and, and we really appreciate the turnaround on that. No, uh, thank you guys so much and Bonnie helped with that document a lot. Um, but you guys are just so wonderful. We're so blessed to be a part of this and so thankful uh, to Bonnie and Jennifer and Gabrielle and Eric and everybody So and all the students. So just thank you so much. Oh, great. Well, this is good. So I think we're turning a corner and we've got, like I said, six weeks left. So I think we're going to be, really start seeing things come together where we are. It's not just all in our heads. We're going to start seeing things on, on virtual paper. So, well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate the time and good luck to you, Jason. Thank you. Have a great thank week. Take care. <laughs> it's been good to see you.
Uh, uh, be exciting. Be very <laughs> keep us. I don't know. I, I don't know if you're on. Tw- are you on on Twitter or anything? I just want. How are we going to know when this baby arrives? Well, I can post it in the in the. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if I should post it there, but I'll, I'll let <laughs> you. You can know. post it anywhere <laughs> yeah. you want. We don't care. <laughs> okay. The Google Plus group. <laughs> there you go. That's we, fine. we got lots of we got lots of action happening over there. Yeah, so that's just a hot bed it, of excitement over I'll, there. I'll put it right in there. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. All right. Talk to you soon, Bye-bye. everybody. Bye-bye.